Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be adding two of my favorite Pilgrim fights. I don't think I added them in the original guide release. Um, th the reason I think I didn't include them is because I used this footage before in the promo video and then I would used it in a PvP video prior to that. But still, these are really good Pilgrim videos that I wanted to show you guys. So that's what we're doing today is we're going to watch this and hopefully everything works out well here. Um, I'm trying to get my recording uh, software set up properly and uh, make it work a little bit better than it has in the past. So we're going to see how that works. Let's mute this first. That, as you probably heard, was some queen. <clears throat> so I'm in the Pilgrim, and I'm in GRNJ. This is back when I was uh, living in that pocket of Syndicate. There was a bunch of guys, uh, mostly Care Bear Alliance, that lived there. And I spent a lot of times harassing these guys. Um, there's an Ares here, which is, is all good. And I can certainly kill an Ares, but I see a prophecy on scan. Um, these guys had been, you know, they, they hated me a lot. These are the guys that made the mailing list. Um, you know, like a bad and is so terrible or something and made a mailing list in which they, you know, made fun of me because they hated me so much. So I, I would have engaged the Ares right there. But there's a prophecy on scan. It made me think twice. Um, Garmer comes in. Ares and Garmer are both very viable targets. But I'm not really sure if I want to, to take this fight just yet. You can see I've got Hans and Philippe. Hans is in this system. And most likely he's providing links. Um, shield hit points. Uh, speed. And what else? Point range maybe? So right now I can tank this forever. I'm kind of waiting and stirring stuff up, seeing what else I can get, see what other interest I can get over here. Um, there's no threat to be here <clears throat> with the uh, with the Ares, and I have little chance of catching anything but the Ares here. I could probably nuke the Ares real quick, um, but I decide to jump through instead in case maybe it's bait. Um, honestly, I, I might, uh, in retrospect, just go for it. Maybe I knew that the prophecy was here waiting. Um, so here I see the prophecy. Um, let's, let's go ahead and stop it. I see the prophecy here, and I know that the prophecy is most likely going to engage me. The reason I know that is because the drones are out. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm having to clear my throat a lot. I know he's going to engage because he's got his drones out, and he just, you know, I just believe he's going to engage. So, um... He looks like he's going to engage. He's got his drones out. So what I'm going to do is rather than try to warp off, I'm going to approach the gate, micro warp drive on. I kind of fumbled that a little bit. I was going to maybe fight this guy and see if I could then... Let's hold on. Let's see what I do here. Okay, so I am fighting this guy. This is not how I remembered it. Okay, so I decide to fight him. Now, I think what I was planning here then is the only thing I could have been thinking is that instead of trying to kill him, because I, I'm, odds are I'm not going to have time to kill him before they can respond. What I was doing is I was aggroing him, hoping that it would pull the other guys through, and then I ran away from him because I really didn't want to fight him. I just wanted to aggro him, force him to aggro me, and then hopefully draw in one of the, the other. That's exactly what I was doing. I was trying to aggro him so that the Garmer would jump in and charge me, and I could maybe draw the Garmer off gate far enough to kill him. That's exactly what I was doing. All right, so I decide to disengage here. Um, I'm not really sure. I think, oh, it's because my shields are so low. Okay. So he did more damage to me than I anticipated. I haven't watched this video in a while, so I'm sorry that I'm not really uh, remembering it exactly correct. That's a good thing about the Pilgrim is it's hard for anybody to lock you down. And you see he's thinking that He's all big and special. And actually, I think it's the one where in the other system some dude's talking crap about me. They really disliked me, <laughs> which just made it all the more fun. The fact that they hated me so much made the, this entire thing so much more fun. Just accepting I got a corp there. All right, so now I see the three of them. My goal here... If I do this the way I remember, my goal here is to warp down to the gate, get some aggro, and jump through. All right. 
Come on. Let's fast forward in a little bit. Here we go. All right, so I know what they got. Prophecy, Garmer, Aries. Garmer and Aries are easy, easy, easy. Um, but the prophecy can put out enough DPS to where if they did lock me down, potentially they could hold me between the three of them. They could hold me long enough to do some damage. Now, the prophecy just made a big mistake right there. Let's pause it. He just made a massive mistake right there by aggroing me. And the only reason I'm delaying my jump through here is because I'm wanting to get that Garmer to come back a little bit closer to the gate and hoping that the Garmer will jump through as well. So I wanted to give the Garmer time because now I've got a gate isolation. So if you've watched my isolation video, you know the, the different types of isolations. There's distance isolations, 100K. Um, there's gate isolations. There's warp isolations. I've got a gate isolation here. So that guy is aggroed for 30 seconds on the other side. He cannot jump through. So right now, I'm going to charge the Aries. Just jump in, uncloak, approach, approach, approach. No, I'm running. I should be approaching. All right, that's fine. In retrospect, if I had to do it again, I would approach, approach, approach on the Aries and get newts on him. Just completely wipe his cap out. And get on top of them. I didn't stagger or anything. And now that the Garmer's in, same thing. Get him locked up. And the most important thing I can do here is get newts on him. I should have had a newt available sooner. Need to get all his newts on him as fast as possible. Because if I can newt him and turn off his micro warp drive, he no longer maintains his ability to keep me at range. And all of a sudden, he is just dead. So now that I have nuked his capacitor, he has nothing he can use against me. Nothing he can do to survive me. Nothing he can do to get out of this fight. He's dead. And this is back when Garmers were a little bit more expensive. These days, they're not as, as special as they used to be. Um, this was right after they came out. So, like, the Garmer was kind of a big deal. Or some, somewhere around there. So, the Garmer goes down pretty quick. Pretty easy. Um, that's it. I mean, it's the, the real lesson here is to look for opportunities and know what when know what the opportunities are so next time you're out and you see something like that where there's a big ship that you can't really kill like the prophecy it's got massive tank it's got drones with great dps um he can't catch me i can nude him and warp off and i'm faster than him but i can't really kill him so for a ship like that you know you just want to get him locked up somewhere like on the other side of a gate and then jump through and just completely burn down all of his little support ships. So when you're out PvP and you see that situation, um, that's a real easy one. That's a gimme. So let's go to the next video here. All right, so Awesome vs. Frig Fleet. That's the, the title. So let me preface this a little bit. In the Shield Fit Pilgrim, I'm in Cloud Ring. And these guys, I believe, are flying dangerous. Uh, they're on a little roam um, with frigates. There's a Caracal somewhere, as you can see on the directional. Algo somewhere is right there, I guess. Just not showing up on directional. And a couple other things that maybe aren't showing here. There's one or two more, I think. So what I decided to do here is, because nothing out of these three, none of them are a threat to me. So that's what's cool about the Pilgrim. None of these three guys are really a threat. I mean, they're, they could tie me down on the gate, but because their DPS output all total between the three of them is less than 500, and that's assuming, you know, that's, that's assuming that they're high skill and well fit, um, which usually I, you tend to overestimate your enemies. Um, but assuming that they're well fit, 500 DPS I'm going to shred them so fast that that 500 DPS will not have enough time to get through me. So in this case, in a situation, even if there was one more of them, I am very confident that I can kill them all if I just sat still. Right? But the safe thing to do here, let's see if I can do it. All right. The safe thing to do is my ship, it's hard to tell exactly because I haven't uncloaked yet, but my ship's like right here. So the safe thing to do 
is to find the ship closest to me, which would be this Tristan right here. And then hit keep at 100, which is what I have that preset to. And shoot out the side here. And so what that's going to do is before he can lock me down or any of these other guys can lock me down, I'm going to get some micro warp drive velocity up and I'm going to put some space in between these guys. And so I'm going to string them out, you know, so that they're like a, you know, a string. They're uh, trying to think of a good, you know, metaphor for it, but there's a string of them and they're spread. So they're not all right on top of each other. And so another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let's see if I can get rid of that and start back up is okay. So I have not now there I'm uncloaked. Tristan's right on top of me. Why haven't I hit micro warp drive yet? I don't even know what happened there. I made a mistake. Oh, I haven't uncloaked. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uncloak micro warp drive. Start moving. Got to keep moving away from these guys. Lock them up in order of closest to furthest. Primary them in order of closest to furthest. As I'm running, they have several that are faster than me. You can see the crow managed to come up a little bit closer for a second and then backed off. Now it's the algos that's closest. So this was back before the newt changes. So now you'd be able to put your newts on these guys at 35 kilometers. Back then, you were limited to what was it, 24, 25? I think it was 25. So... Back then, you couldn't do that. It's a recent change. So go ahead and get the drones out. Let them start working on these guys until they get the, the guts to come in. I see the Tristan's got the guts to come in now. He's coming after me. As soon as he gets 25, I need newts. Um, the crow shot in a little bit faster than the Tristan. So save your newts. Don't put more than one per ship because there's multiple ships. In this case, whenever there's multiples, you want to just put one newt per ship. It's plenty for a frigate. You can see that chased the crow off, um, and he's running now. He realized he was in trouble, but my warriors, luckily I used warriors instead of medium drones in that case, warriors stayed with him and killed him before he warped. Um, had he just hit warp instead of trying to run, you know, maybe he'd have got away. Um, so now it's on to the Tristan. And, you know, the whole time this is happening, let's get our marker again, just, just for fun. The whole time this was happening, <clears throat> there was, you know, I'm trying to monitor my overview here. I'm trying to keep a close eye on what's happening on the overview. The thing that's most important to me is the range. So the biggest danger to me is range. This Tristan is endangering me by being within 12K. He potentially could get a scram on me, which would kill my velocity and allow the Caracal, which is moving towards me, to catch up to me. You can see the Caracal's radial velocity there is negative 1900. So he's, he's doing about 2,000 meters a second towards me at this point in the fight. So he is closing quick. The claw is at 95. He's not a big threat to me, but because he's so fast, he can really cover that distance quickly. The Algos is the second biggest threat to me than the Caracal. He's 31 kilometers. Now, I don't know if he's going to scram me. It's 50-50 on Algos whether they scram. My, my opinion is Algos should fit a scram and go up close. But a lot of people like to turn them into kites. Um, but he's got 31 kilometers, and he's the one doing the most DPS. Those are probably his drones right there. So for me, I've already killed the Caracal. Basically, I need to continue moving in the same direction. So a lot of times when you're, like I said before, that you would hit your keep at right here, you've got to be very careful about that. Because if you hit keep at on a target that dies or warps off the field, your ship comes to a stop. So what I will usually do, I say keep at, but I, it's an important distinction to make, is I hit keep at, then I look at the direction my ship's going, and I kind of find a belt or something, and I'll double click to that direction to make sure my ship just continues in that direction, because that's so crucial that you continue moving. If all of a sudden I killed this Tristan, and I had it, um, had the keep at thing here, saying that I was keeping at, um, if I had that going, and the Tristan died, all of a sudden my ship would come to a stop with the microwave drive running, and I'd have all these ships on top of me. Now, because I've got so much shield, I'd probably survive and be able to work my way through them, and then, at very worst, just newt and warp off from the Caracal after I killed everything else. But, um, to, to be safe in these situations, like, 
the typical jump into the fleet and take the fight situation is a running fight. And that's what this is. It's jump in and then make it a straight line running fight and kill them along the way as they catch you because they are quicker than you, but you have the newt to ensure they never quite catch up with you. So, moving on. Tristan is going down. Now I've hit my keypad again on the Algos because I'm trying, what I'm trying to do there, so I just spent all that time describing something and I do something different. Um, what I'm doing there is because the Algos is coming and I felt relatively safe that I was going to get the Tristan is I wanted to back off the Algos and one way of doing something like that is to just hit keypad on that ship and that'll move you away from that ship. And so now I feel like the Tristan's running away and I have control of the fight, so I'm approaching. And that's just because I feel like I have complete control um, and I'm not at any risk. It was probably not the best move to make because you see now I've got three of them on top of me. Tristan's taken a lot longer to die than I had hoped. Um, now I want to get the claw. The Tristan's down. So the claw's the next target. It's one of the more valuable. In general, you want to prioritize by value. Right, and you can see my shield starting to get a little bit low. I mean, my, you know, I, I kind of think of it as a, it's my time to start considering worrying point. You know, where I start thinking, well, maybe it's time to, to, to start looking at ways to get out of here. Um, and that's for the pilgrim. That's at fifty percent shield. So at fifty percent shield, when I'm in the pilgrim, that means that about half my tank, not quite half of my tank's gone. I'm getting into peak recharge, but the peak recharge is relatively minor and not going to make much difference. So at 50%, you've got just over 50% of your shield hit points effectively left because there'll be a little bit of recharge in there. So, and then you've got your armor and your structure. Um, so at 50%, you know, that's when it's time to say, okay, I've, I've used up most of my buffer for this fight. Let's, let's disengage and maybe come back later. So at this point, you start considering ways to get out and putting yourself in this, into a situation where you maybe you can continue fighting, but you've also got an out. So right here, I would expect myself to start looking for something to align to so that I could stay aligned with Micro Warp Drive on and start killing stuff. So you can see I'm focused on the claw. I've got all three newts on him because he kind of scared me a little bit coming in that fast, um, that aggressively. So I've got all three on him. We've backed off the Caracal. That's a very good thing. Um, the Claw's going down rapidly. Now I want the Algos. I've taken control of the field to the point here where even at 50% shield, I feel safe going after the Algos because the Caracal is so far away. And the Caracal doesn't appear to be doing anything to me. He doesn't have me locked. So in that case, it's just better to go for the Algos. You can see my shields are coming back up a little bit. He's pulled his shields from me. He's running. He's seen all his buddies die. He doesn't want to die. He's running away from me. So I decide, nope, that's enough. Let's back off and get out of here. I'm in fleet with Hans, you see, but Hans is in the system. He's somewhere else. Go ahead and pull in the drones. I didn't notice the guys asking for a pod express. And then move on. So that's basically, you know, so it's a little confused, I feel, but that's basically the strategy I, I use in that situation when I'm in the Pilgrim. Now, I was at zero risk um, for the majority of that fight. I was at zero risk. Um, all I, like the very beginning, I could have just cloaked and whooped off. But because I saw that it was engageable, the Caracal wasn't on field yet. And even if it was, it's slow enough um, and nutable to the point where I could nude it off me and warp out. Um, they usually, Caracals rarely have cap boosters. Um, so it's, it's a lot easier to escape than a lot of other ships might be. So I figured, worst case scenario, I get scrammed by one of those ships early on. And let's, let's rewind it for that. You know, worst case scenario, I get scrammed really quick by the crow. And that's assuming the crow has a scram. Most don't. Um, so maybe I get scrammed by the Tristan. Um, worst case, I get scrammed really early on, and then I've got all these guys piled on top of me, all four of them, right? Worst case scenario, I still survive that fight, and that's the decision I made coming into this, 
is that yes, with the Caracal added, maybe it's 800 DPS. Um, not likely that it's that good, but it could be. So 800 DPS total, not from the Caracal, God no. Um, but 800 DPS total, which for me is um, about 30 seconds um, effectively for me to be fighting and have a chance to, to make anything happen before I go down. In that 30 seconds, I can probably take down all of the frigates in the Algos and drop that DPS quite a bit and get the newts on the Caracal and enough to where then I could warp off. So the newts on the Pilgrim allow you to take a lot of risks. If I was in a Nano Cane from the old days, Nano Cane, or a currently an SFI, SFI is still pretty a pretty nice solo ship I enjoy flying. Um, if I was in the SFI, I would do the same tactic. Now, I wouldn't have the newts to back them off, and if they scram me, I would be in a little bit more trouble. But the trade-off for the uh, Stabber Fleet issue is that I have better speed and better agility. So I would be able to to keep them at range a little bit longer, um, and then the guns would probably hit them a little bit harder um, and more reliably, at least at first, until tracking became an issue. But that's, 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 um, that's it for this update. I hope I haven't already done these videos before, and I'm just redoing them for no reason. Um, but I've got some other Pilgrim updates that I'm going to be doing here soon. I just wanted to go ahead and get this one out today um, so that you guys could see it and uh, get an idea. But basically two strategies there that you can, you know, the takeaway from this are two strategies. One, if you see a small group of people, like in the first fight, big ship and two little ships, Isolate out the big ship and kill the two little ships. If you jump into a system and you see a bunch of small ships like this, and by a bunch I mean three, four, five smaller ships being um, frigates and maybe the Tech 1 destroyers, not Svapools and Confessors. You can kill Svapools and Confessors for sure. But at the same time, um, showing off all my kills there, at the same time, you can't do it with a lot of them at once, so you need a better isolation. But with these, with interceptors and stuff, you don't even have to worry that much about isolation. They drop really fast because most people don't properly tank their interceptors, and they have just no tank. Um, personally, I always put a medium shield extender on my interceptors, always. And I am the king of interceptor flying. Like for fleets, tackle, I'm, that's what I pride myself in. That's what I love. Um, so whenever we go on a fleet, you know, they always want me to be in the triage carrier, which I have like level five and whatever, and I'm decent at that. But uh, the thing that I really love flying in a fleet is an interceptor. It's, uh, it's the funnest thing to fly in the fleet, in my opinion, because you're the one that really makes it happen. If you get the tackle, you made that fight happen. You're the one that's created the fight. So you're the one that's kind of gets the credit. And also in an interceptor, there's so much more you can do. Um, there's defensive things you can do, offensive things. You can get 100k behind them and then have your fleet warp to you at 100. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. But this is an interceptor video. Hope you guys enjoyed this update of the Pilgrim Guide um, and didn't mind the rambling too much. I'm going to do a few more of these hopefully in the next week and post some more updates to the Pilgrim Guide.